fantastic day. All right, we are gonna be moving back into physical jog today. Uh, moving on to part twenty five. All right, I've already gone through the previous part, part twenty four, in, in in literally the previous video. So part. 24, if you haven't checked it out, it's on Braided Rivers. So we're going to move on to Meandering Rivers today in this second part, right? So sit back, grab your pillow, grab your pen, grab whatever you need to grab, and we are going to get started. Okay, this is going to be a very exciting um, video, I feel, okay, because Meandering Rivers are actually quite fun, okay, once you actually have a hang of it. So go ahead and make sure you understand what this part is all about. It is very easy to score in and it's actually quite simple to answer, all right? So let's jump right into this part, all right? So this is an example of a meandering river. You guys all have heard of this, right? The Amazon River. If you haven't heard of it, go and search it up. It's quite a very, very fancy long river. Right, the Amazon River, as you can see, is obviously a meander, okay, because it kind of like goes in a snake, right? You can see that it goes around, 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 right? It's basically a meandering river, right? Meandering is essentially anything that has a lot of these curve like um, features of a river, right? So, the Amazon River is an example for you guys to take note of. So, the meandering river has got four stages, right? Similar to that of the braided river, right? But braided river, we have already learned that it requires seasonal climate. Okay, and the four stages is basically very easy to remember. It's high-low, high-low. Right? For the meandering river, okay, the, the four stages of the formation are basically more, slightly harder, right? It's based off certain features of a meandering river. So, the first stage is going to be your alternating bars of sediment. This is pre existing, which means that the, the river must already have these. Okay, it could be due to erosion, um, deposition as well. Um, the second stage is when there's the development of pools and riffles. The third stage is when there is an uh, alternate sequence of pools and riffles. And the last stage is when there's the formation of river cliffs and point bars, which are the key features of a meandering river. All right, we'll go through that later on. All right, so step one. Not step one, sorry, stage one. Okay, your alternating bars of sediment, right? So, meandering rivers always start off with alternating bars of sediment which are pre existing, which means that the river has somehow formed them okay, via um, erosion and deposition that was occurring with, within the river channel itself. So, pre existing alternate bars of sediment in channels formed by deposition in lower velocity areas, right? Remember, it has to be lower velocity, okay, because like we've learned before, um, in order for your deposition to occur, there has to be a low level of river energy, a low level of river velocity. That's how your sediments are going to deposit. Okay, so when there's alternating bars of sediments, okay, essentially deflects tarwek. Right? What is this thing called tarwek? Okay, tarwek, think of it like a line that is basically being defected. Okay, this is a line connecting the lowest points of successive cross sections along the course of a valley or river. So think of the lowest points of the river. Basically, um, the when there are basically alternating bars, let's say these are the bars of sediment over here. Okay, the tarwek is basically like a line of velocity that just goes through lo the low velocity, I mean the, the, the low points okay, of the cross section areas. And what happens is that as it goes through, it hits, let's say it hits, a bar of sediment and then it deflects upwards and then it hits this bar of sediment and then deflects again and then it deflects to another bar of sediment and it just keeps deflecting. That is essentially what tarwek is, okay? That is what we call tarwek um, when it's basically being deflected as they see just the line, um, kind of like a line of velocity. Alright, so what happens is that when tarwek actually deflects, okay, it starts to form these things called pools and riffles, alright? So when the deposition bars, the pre-existing bars of sediment, okay, when they deflect tarwek to the opposite bank, so like we have said just now, there are banks, let's say there's a bar of sediment here, it deflects, okay, to this opposite bank, okay, it starts a erosion process known as abrasion, right, we've learned this before, um, abrasion actually starts to take place, so this is an erosional process, which means that sediments are going to develop, so when it starts to form this abrasion process, it forms pools and riffles. Pools are essentially the depressions that are formed at the apex of curvature. This is not on, eh? so this is apex of curvature, okay, on the river bed. So it's not on the river bank, okay, it deflects to the bank, but it does erosion on the bed. That is why it's abrasion and not hydraulic action. Right, go and look at that video if you need to. I'll leave a link in the time corner screen. Okay, I've gone through erosion um, processes of your abrasion, hydraulic action, attrition, all the different kinds. Go check it out. All right, so it basically does um, erosion, and what happens is it causes these depressions, right, when it does erosion. Um, think of it like the ground is basically like sinking. Okay, so it does all these um cause all these depressions which are known as pools on the riverbed and it also forms riffles. Okay, riffles are basically the, the deposits of sediments um, 
at the point of inflection with lowest velocity. Key reason being is because in order for um, the sediments to even deposit, there has to be low velocity to begin with. So only at the points of inflection, okay, I'll go through what is the point of inflection in the apex of curvature later on. Okay, will there be this deposition of sediments? All right, so these deposition of sediments are known as riffles. All right, so this is stage two where it forms pools and riffles. So as you can see over here, okay, this is basically the picture that I've uh, found. Okay, this is what happens when um the okay, this is already a very very um progressive meandering river right so take out take take it that this is a bit further on in, in the stage right but essentially this is where the apex of curvature is it is at this point over here let's say the tower deflects up here maybe i should use a pen so if the tower deflects up here towards this apex here okay it would does it does erosion over here so at this apex of curvature is where the pool will form okay and then as it continues going 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 down further down right the sediments will get carried 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 all the way here and around this point okay of inflection right this is where the curve starts to change direction right you notice the change in direction here right this at this point is where it has got the lowest velocity so when there's lowest velocity over here the sediments will have to be deposited okay so sediments are deposited so over here is where it will form all your riffles all right, so that's roughly how it looks like. Okay, the apex of curvature and the riffles. That is, I mean, and the point of inflection. That is where your pools and riffles will form. All right, so then you move on to your stage three, which is going to be the alternate sequence of pools and riffles. So, like we've seen in the previous diagram, actually, right, you notice that there's con continual curves, right, that's occurring, whereby there's going to be a pool on top and then a riffle in the middle and then pool at the bottom and riffle in the top. So that's going to keep occurring. So this over time. Okay, time is going to be a factor here. When your tower wax starts to swing up and down, up and down, up and down, okay, it will form this alternate deposition and erosion um, resulting in the f in the alternate sequence of pools and riffles okay, that are basically spaced apart. So like if we have seen, sorry, in this diagram over here, you notice that there's one pool up here. There's a riffle over here. There'll be another pool down here. There'll be a riffle over here. Pool up here, riffle over here. So this is what happens when tower keeps on deflecting up, down, up, down, hitting again the banks um, and doing erosion and deposition. Alright, so this causes Tawet to swing in a more uniform pattern, right, because it starts to go up, down, up, down, right, and it results in this slight channel curvature, whereby the channel will start to become more curvy and curvy worthy already, right? So this is where the meandering river is starting to form. But in order for a meandering river to be called a meandering river, it has to have certain specific features. In this case, they are known as your river cliff and your point bars. So as the result of the slight channel curvature that has been formed by your tower, okay, the alternate um, bouncing up and down, okay, there is this new flow that is being created. It's called the helicoidal flow. Okay, it's kind of like a tur sort of like a turbulent flow. Okay, essentially, what this um, helicoidal flow does is it basically causes your um, it causes the the river to kind of like um, have a meandering shape, sort of. Okay, this helicoidal flow is basically like a um, think of it like a like a corkscrew. Okay, it basically goes like up and down, up and down, up and down in like kind of like circular. It's like a circular motion. All right, so it causes a circular motion of uh, of the thing, and this will cause the river cliffs to actually start forming. Okay, reason being is that when there's all these circular circular flows of um, the helicoidal flow in the water, right, it causes a lot of water, which I'll highlight in blue over here, to actually pile up along the sides, right? Because it's kind of like a, think of it like a, like a mini tornado sort of, right? So it's forming a lot of water, causing a lot of water to form out along the sides of your river bank, which could be over here. Okay, this could be a river bank, okay, the outer bank especially, right? And what happens is that when this occurs, um, it will cause... Um, a hydraulic gradient to occur. We've already gone through what a hydraulic gradient is. When there's a hydraulic gradient, it's usually because of piling up of water. So this hydraulic gradient would cause erosion to occur on the outer bank, right? Because of the constant turbulent flow, uh, the constant pushing care of water, um, it would cause hydraulic action to take place as well as a result of this hydraulic gradient. Okay, and this causes erosion to occur on the outer bank over here. Okay, and this will cause increased sediment load in the river. Alright, so this will cause the current or the velocity of the river to instead, okay, at the weaker bank, alright, weaken instead. Okay, because like we have said, right, the meandering river is that starting to have all these gradual curves already, right? So, along the outer bank, okay, if there's a lot of erosion going on and the velocity is very high, along the inner bank, 
K is where, let's say there's a cross section at you, right? Let's say the inner bank K will basically have um, not much current at all, right? Because all the velocity is pushed against the outer bank, right? So the inner bank has got no energy at all. Um, it's where all the sediments will basically be eroded, uh, will be de deposited, K okay, after it picks up the um, erosion, uh, picks up the sediments, K okay, from the outer bank, and then it will bring it back in slowly and then deposit, and then come back up again, and then deposit, and come back up, erode, come back down, deposit. Right, so it's kind of like a, like a mini cycle that is a mini tornado that's being formed. Okay, so this actually starts the formation of the bars of coarse sediments, and these bars are known as point bars. Right, I'll show you a diagram later on how it looks like. Um, on the other hand, at the outer bank, okay, the erosion causes the collapse of the bank, and this forms steep river cliffs. All right, so continual erosion over time will cause the entire um river bank to actually the outer bank to actually weaken, and it will cause the outer bank to actually fall. So when it falls and Ks in, K would be when um, it actually results in this river cliff K being formed. So the repeated cycle of the collapse of river cliffs and point bars will result in a fully developed meandering river that is always headed downstream. Okay, a meandering river doesn't go upstream, it heads towards going down. Alright, so I'll draw for you a little diagram over here of what your helicordial flow looks like. So think of the river as something like this. Okay, so the river is going like this, something like this, right? So what happens is that there's a helicordial flow, which I will do in red, okay? That goes in like this. So it's kind of like a corkscrew motion. So this is how the helicordial flow basically looks like. So as a result of this, okay, it causes the outer bank. Highlight here in yellow. This is basically my outer bank. Okay, it causes outer bank over here to actually erode. And it causes the sediments to be brought towards... Okay, the sediments do, 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 brought towards the inner part over here, we should form the inner bank of my point bars. Okay, which is basically a lot of sediments that are being collected over here. Alright, so within the water itself, this is what actually happening. Okay, the outer bank. This is the outer bank. Is where the erosion is taking place. The sediments are brought over and they are deposited over here at the point bar. Okay, so this river bank, uh, the outer bank over here would basically be what we call the river cliff when it starts to collapse. Alright, so this is how it looks like from the from the outside view, right? So that means like, let's say, if you guys still can't see it, right, outside here is all grass, for instance. Okay, and then that is the river bank, and then in here is just the, maybe the bit of grass here, right? And then the point bar is where it forms over there. All right, so let's say now we chop the river into half, okay? And we look at the um, the cross-sectional area. Okay, if you guys want to know how to actually draw it, because sometimes exams may ask you to draw this as well. Um, what happens is that we will actually be looking at a cross-sectional area which looks something like this. Okay, the cross-sectional area looks something like this. Actually, wait, let me... Let me draw it the other way for easier illustration. Oops. So it looks something like this, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's something like this, okay? Um, what happens is that there is all your deposition of sediments over here, correct? So this is basically the, where the inner bank is. Okay, you have got your pools that occur below here. And this is basically the steep river bank on this uh, river cliff, sorry, steep river cliff, alright, and this is basically the point bars over here, so this is where all your sediments are being deposited, so if you can see, right, essentially this is where the helicopter flow is taking place, so it erodes the river cliff, brings the sediments over, and then deposits them over here at the point bar, and then it goes back again, this is basically my Helicordial flow. Alright, so this is if we were to chop the river into half to see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, this is how it will look like. Alright, so then what are the conditions for a meandering river to form? Right? We've already gone through most of it through the stages that I've just gone through. Okay, firstly, you need low levels of discharge. Okay, reason being is for the whole purpose of your uh, riffles to form, right? Your pools and riffles to form. Um, there doesn't have to be a lot of energy to begin with. Okay, as long as Tawak exists, it will cause the deflection and hence your pools and riffles to form. Um, 
Next thing would be a low amount of sediment load. Okay, yeah, we have also already gone through why. Um, essentially, this is for riffles as well. Okay, and the low amount of sediment load will also allow your point bars to form um, gradually over time. Okay, so smaller and finer sediment load is for easier erosion. Okay, if your sand silt grade okay, will be desirable for erosion and deposition. And lastly, it will be a gentler slope. Okay, usually from the mid to lower course, all right? So that there is not much turbulent flow. The... Meandering River can can really happen gradually. Right? Meandering Rivers take a very long time to actually develop, but um, reason being is because they really do require um, time, okay, to actually develop. Right, you cannot form a point bar overnight. You cannot form a river cliff overnight. It has to be the gradual erosion and deposition, erosion, deposition, erosion, deposition that will actually form this entire very very nice curvature to actually um form. All right, so that's for your meandering river. Okay, so then it boils us down to our exam requirements, right? So what do we need to know? F- for this chapter to begin with. So you just need to be able to explain fully the formation of a meandering river, the different stages, the four different stages. Discuss the factors that affect the formation of the meandering river. Uh, personally, I still feel that the climate and discharge K will still be the most important because it determines whether the river channel will turn into a meandering river or whether it will turn into a braided river or just be a normal um, ephemeral stream okay, or just a river channel. Alright, so go and look at your macro factors. Those are usually going to be the more important ones. And also discuss in relation to braided rivers. So the main differences between the two is that braided requires seasonal climate and um, meandering rivers require a slow, gradual, long period of time to actually um, cause the formation of pools, riffles, and then followed by your um, point bar and your river cliffs. Alright, so they have very, very specific conditions and specific requirements that braided and meandering both require so go and look at the two and see whether you can make that kind of comparisons all right so that is actually all i have for meandering rivers it's a pretty long video i think at least a slightly longer one um but it does cover everything you need to know for meandering rivers so if any questions that you are still unsure of you can just leave it in the comment section below i will answer them as well and if you did enjoy this video okay do give it a like it really does help me out a lot as well as subscribe to the channel it's free it doesn't cost you anything so go ahead and just hit it for me and if not Yeah, that's actually all I have. I'll see you guys in the next one. Could be physical, could be human joy, could be econs. I don't know. It really depends on my upload schedule. Um, But yeah, if you want to see more physical joy, do let me know as well what kind of content you want to see. We can move on to question analysis very soon because we are actually coming towards the end of our content series already. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.